Welcome everybody to this weekend's celebration of Mass. We've got the wonderful feast of the Assumption of our Blessed Lady into Heaven. And so we will do a little bit of singing today. We'll sing the great hymn of St. Alphonsus, O Mother Blessed. So just to give those of you who want to look it up a moment or two, I'll just say a word of introduction, especially to the children. So I've got pretty freckles here as usual. And uh, I think the one thing I want you to know about today's feast, because I'm not going to preach a homily, it's uh, summertime, we're sort of holiday time, but we'll do a little bit of singing to thank God for the gift of Mary as our mother. And this great feast reminds us that we are all called to do what Mary has done, and that is to join Jesus in heaven. Now, there's nothing in the scriptures which tells us that Mary went up to heaven. We don't even know whether she died before she went up. But the church simply reflects that it just must be so that after her wonderful vocation, her unique vocation, being the one chosen to bring Jesus into our world so that he could unite us with his Father, that the promises of Jesus must have already been fulfilled for her. So she's gone to heaven now, body and soul. She's got the resurrected body that we look forward to having one day. And that's really what this feast is all about. Um, down through the centuries, people did question, is this really so? And in the end, in 1950, even when Father Tim was alive, I'd been, I was four years old when it was finally declared as a dogma of faith that, yes, the Assumption of Mary is indeed part of our faith, but it had been believed by the Christian community from the very early days. There's no record of anywhere where Mary might have been buried or, or whatever, or even that she died, as I say. That's not necessary. All we do is that God wants us to believe like Mary did, that Jesus is our saviour and he's preparing a place for us in heaven. So Freddie got to understand this because he knew one of the two people who had died. I always remember when my mum's mum died, she was the only grandparent I ever knew. But I knew because my mum and dad had great faith in Jesus' promises that God had gone to prepare a place for us and that one day we would all be reunited. And that's what we're celebrating today. Okay? So now, we should be ready to sing the first two verses of O Mother Bless, the hymn written by the Redemptorist founder, St. Alphonsus. O Mother Bless, whom God bestows on sinners and on just, what joy, what hope thou givest those who in thy mercy trust. Thou art clement, thou art chaste, Mary, thou art fair. Of all mothers, sweetest, best, none with thee compare. O heavenly mother, mistress sweet, it never yet was told, that suppliant sinner left thy feet, unpitied, unconsoled. Thou art clement, thou art chaste, Mary, thou art fair. Of all mothers, sweetest, best, none with thee compare. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. We prepare to celebrate this wonderful feast by pausing for a moment and praying that Jesus, as always, will heal any hurt in our lives and forgive us our sins. So we pray, Lord have mercy, Lord have mercy, Christ have mercy, Christ have mercy, Lord have mercy, Lord have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Gloria, Gloria, in excelsis Deo. Gloria, Gloria, in excelsis Deo. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of goodwill. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory. 
Lord God, Heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, Only Begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Gloria, Gloria, in excelsis Deo. Gloria, Gloria, in excelsis Deo. Let us pray. Almighty ever-living God, who assumed the Immaculate Virgin Mary, the mother of your Son, body and soul, into heavenly glory, grant, we pray, that always attentive to the things that are above, we may merit to be sharers of her glory, through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, for ever and ever. Amen. Now, we have three readings today, of course, including the Gospel. The the first one is, is really a strange one from the book of the Apocalypse, the book of Revelation. I think the thing to remember is this book we always think was written by John, that he had this fantastic dream. And Sometimes when we wake out of a dream, we think, gosh, that was extraordinary. And yet we see what the dream is pointing us to, the power of goodness in God overcoming evil and how this woman is caught up in this whole mystery. We see Mary reflected in this dream of St. John. So just listen to this. A reading from the book of the Apocalypse. The sanctuary of God in heaven opened and the Ark of the Covenant could be seen inside it. Now a great sign appeared in heaven, a woman adorned with the sun, standing on the moon and with the twelve stars on her head for a crown. She was pregnant and in labour, crying aloud in the pangs of childbirth. Then a second sign appeared in the sky a huge red dragon, which had seven heads and ten horns, and each one of the seven heads crowned with a coronet. Its tail dragged a third of the stars from the sky and dropped them to the earth. And the dragon stopped in front of the woman as she was having the child, so that he could eat it as soon as it was born from its mother. The woman brought a male child into the world, the son who was to rule all the nations with an iron scepter. And the child was taken straight up to God and to his throne, while the woman escaped into the desert, where God had made a place of safety ready. Then I heard a voice shout from heaven, Victory and power and empire for ever have been won by our God and all authority for his Christ. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. On your right stands the Queen in garments of gold. On your right stands the Queen in garments of gold. The daughters of kings are among your loved ones. On your right stands the Queen in gold of Ophir. Listen, O daughter, give ear to my words. Forget your own people and your father's house. On your right stands the Queen in garments of gold. So will the king desire your beauty. He is your lord. Pay homage to him. They are escorted amid gladness and joy. They pass within the palace of the king. On your right stands the queen in garments of gold. A reading from the first letter of St Paul to the Corinthians. Christ has been raised from the dead, the first fruits of all who have fallen asleep. Death came through one man, and in the same way, the resurrection of the dead has come through one man. Just as all men die in Adam, so all men will be brought to life in Christ, but all of them in their proper order. Christ as the first fruits, and then after the coming of Christ, those who belong to him. After that will come the end, when he hands over the kingdom to God the Father, having done away with every sovereignty, authority and power. For he must be king until he has put all his enemies under his feet. And the last of the enemies to be destroyed is death. For everything is to be put under his feet. 
the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. I'm sure you can see why the church chose that reading to remind us that Jesus has risen from the dead and that is our destiny, as I told you, uh, illustrated beautifully for us by Mary, his mother. So we stand to welcome the gospel. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. Mary has been taken up into heaven. All the choirs of angels are rejoicing. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. Almighty God, thanks my heart and my lips that I may worthily proclaim your holy gospel. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, Lord. Mary set out and went as quickly as she could to a town in the hill country of Judah. She went into Zechariah's house and greeted Elizabeth. Now, as soon as Elizabeth heard Mary's greeting, the child leapt in her womb, and Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Spirit. She gave a loud cry and said, of all women, you are the most blessed, and blessed is the fruit of your womb. Why should I be honoured with a visit from the mother of my Lord? For the moment your greeting reached my ears, the child in my womb leapt for joy. Yes, blessed is she who believed that the promise made her by the Lord would be fulfilled. And Mary said, my soul proclaims the greatness of the Lord, and my spirit exalts in God my Saviour, because he has looked upon his lowly handmaid. Yes, from this day forward all generations will call me blessed, for the Almighty has done great things for me. Holy is his name, and his mercy reaches from age to age for those who fear him. He has shown the power of his arm. He has routed the proud of heart. He has pulled down princes from their thrones and exalted the lowly. The hungry he has filled with good things, the rich sent empty away. He has come to the help of Israel, his servant, mindful of his mercy, according to the promise he made to our ancestors, of his mercy to Abraham and to his descendants forever. Mary stayed with Elizabeth about three months and then went back home. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. You know, one of the most beautiful things, if we think about that hymn of Mary, the Magnificat, which we've just heard, we too can say that prayer alongside Mary. Remember what I said at the beginning? Today we're celebrating our destiny, where God is calling us to, to be with Mary, to be with Jesus, to be with God the Father, all happening through the power of the Holy Spirit. And so, as Mary proclaimed the message of how God had chosen her, we can put those words on our lips and say that God has done great things for us too. We have to learn to be humble to be able to do that as Mary was and not pretend that whatever we achieve is somehow because of ourselves. It's always when we allow the power of God to work within us. And when we do that, we will understand the meaning of today's feast. So let's now make that great act of faith with the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body and life everlasting. Amen. So now we bring our prayers lovingly to God our Father. Let's just pause for a moment and recognise that as we pray this celebration of the Eucharist, wherever you are, as you join me here through this Mass going out now, 
uh, across the world, literally. We sense that we are united with good people, praying people, all over the world. So let's pray too for Pope Francis, for our Archbishop here in Liverpool, Malcolm, for all those who are entrusted with leadership in the church and in society, that they will always recognise they are called to serve. Lord, in your goodness, hear our prayer. As always, I'd like you to join me in praying for the intentions that have been placed in our basket. Again, I wrote quite a few intentions uh, earlier today to make sure that the people who had asked me to remember them were here. I'd like to mention one or two people who, uh, who are celebrating happily uh, in the coming days, uh, particularly two of our parishioners who have been very helpful uh, with looking after the church once we opened it up for the masses. And just as I celebrated my Golden Jubilee of Priesthood the other day, um, today they celebrate, this is on Saturday afternoon now, so it's on the 15th, they're celebrating their Golden Wedding. That's Bill and Fiona Chambers. So congratulations to them. And I, I think they're planning to come to the Half Past Nine Mass tomorrow as well. I'd like you to remember the young people, uh, particularly those who are getting results for exams at this time. There's been a lot of controversy about the whole thing and we hope that everybody will get a just result. So particularly for those who are upset uh, and disturbed by the process, let's pray that everything will be sorted out. And let's pray in thanksgiving for those who've got the results they wanted. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Can we pray for those people who are sick and struggling? Uh, on the good side, we celebrate Father Andrew here, Father Andrew Burns, our rector. He had his birthday on Thursday, his 73rd birthday. But as you know, um, he's having to have this treatment for his lymphoma. So we pray the Lord will help him through that over these coming weeks. Lord, in your goodness, hear our prayer. I'd like to remember all those people who are suffering, suffering from the effects of the pandemic. We think of those people who were injured in the train accident and also those who died. Um, and also I'd like you to continue to pray for that member of our community, Father Martin, who is struggling so much with his breathing, to have to go back into hospital at this present time. So Lord, be with them and bless them. Lord, in your goodness, hear our prayer. I'd also like you to remember um, those who've died. Two friends of mine in Sunderland this week, uh, Ray Maud. So we pray for the repose of Ray's soul and pray for his wife Veronica and the family. And also young Lisa Kirkhouse. I say young because um, she's only in her 50s and her father, Barry, another great friend and servant of the Redemptorist, phoned me to tell me the news. Um, but it's a lovely story, those of you who know it. And, uh, so we pray for you, Barry, and for Brenda, and all the family, and we entrust Lisa lovingly to the Lord. We also remember those whose anniversaries occur around this time. Alan Powell, it's his birthday anniversary tomorrow, the 16th. Um, and also just to mention, in a week's time, hopefully I won't forget, but Elizabeth Markland, it's uh, an anniversary too. Her son George phoned me from California to ask could we remember uh, Elizabeth in our prayers. And uh, we remember Jim Gates, who was buried from here yesterday. So for all these intentions, and those, as I say, who died in the train crash, we continue to remember the people of the Lebanon, let's pray eternal rest, and that they are now experiencing the promises of Jesus. Eternal rest grant unto them, O Lord, and let perpetual light shine upon them. May they rest in peace. Amen. We beg the prayers of Our Lady for all our intentions. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now, and at the hour of our death. Amen. And we pray this prayer of Pope Francis to conclude our prayers. You, salvation of your people, know what we need. We are certain that you will provide so that, as you did at Cana of Galilee, joy and feasting might return after this moment of trial. Dear Heavenly Mother, help us to live these difficult days filled with hope, 
with renewed unity, with a true spirit of obedience to what is required of us, with the certainty that after this trial we may arrive at the blessed and glorious hour of the resurrection. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. By the mystery of this water and wine, may we come to share in the divinity of Christ, who humbled himself to share in our humanity. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. Lord God, we ask you to receive us and be pleased with the sacrifice we offer you with humble and contrite hearts. Lord, wash away my iniquity and cleanse me from my sin. My brothers and sisters, pray that our sacrifice may be acceptable to God the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at our hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. May this oblation, our tribute of homage, rise up to you, O Lord, and through the intercession of the most blessed Virgin Mary, whom you assumed into heaven, may our hearts, aflame with the fire of love, constantly long for you, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. Lift up your hearts, we lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Christ who is our Lord. For today the Virgin Mother of God was assumed into heaven as the beginning and image of your church's coming to perfection and a sign of sure hope and comfort to your pilgrim people. Rightly, you would not allow her to see the corruption of the tomb, since from her own body she marvellously brought forth your incarnate Son, the author of all life. And so, in company with the choirs of angels, we praise you, and with joy we proclaim, Holy, Holy, Holy Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith, save us, Saviour of the world, for by your cross, for by your cross, for by your cross and resurrection, you have set us free. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, 
together with Francis our Pope and Malcolm our Bishop, all the clergy and all your people. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with St. Joseph our spouse, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honour is yours forever and ever. Amen. We prepare lovingly for Holy Communion in the very words Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign for ever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always, and with your spirit. We pray together. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof. But only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. May the body and blood of Christ keep us safe for eternal life. And before I actually receive Holy Communion, I join those of you who are making a spiritual communion now. Dear Jesus, I believe that you are truly present in Holy Communion. I love you and would love to receive you now, but since this is not possible, Please come to me and fill me with all the blessings and graces I need to cope with everything that is going on. Unite us all and give us the peace which you promised only you can give. Amen.
pray. Having received the sacrament of salvation, we ask you to grant, O Lord, that through the intercession of the Blessed Virgin Mary, whom you assumed into heaven, we may be brought to the glory of the resurrection. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Just a, a couple of announcements. Firstly, uh, another big word of thanksgiving. I, I'd like to show you this because I had a, a wonderful visit from Anne Connor, who chairs our parish team, and with her Trish Brophy, who does such terrific work in so many ways, and especially with the prepar preparing of the children for First Communion. This was another present for my Golden Jubilee. And I realised how much work had gone on in the background, liaising with St Mary's, who were getting me that beautiful papal blessing. So I've got these two treasures now um, to hang in my rooms as a memory. And I, I'm hugely grateful, so thank you for, for that. Well, talking of First Communions, this week uh, we're going to make a great effort to give most of the children from St Mary's their First Communion. So I would ask you to remember that. A special notice has gone up, uh, gone up on the uh, websites, uh, in the bulletin. Uh, it's on the church doors. So Monday to Friday, 11 o'clock here, we'd like to reserve the Mass for children making their First Communion and their families, please. Um, Father James, James Preston, has kindly offered to celebrate the two Masses which we've been having at St Mary's. So there will be the usual 7 o'clock in the evening on Tuesday and the midday mass on Thursday. Um, we don't have any funerals this week, um, so thanks be to God. People are coping uh, really quite well. It's unusual at any time of the year not to have funerals in either parish, but there we are, that's the way it is at the moment. So we'll be concentrating on the First Communions. And then just to bear in mind that it's slightly different at St Mary's, it'll be mainly on the uh, next five Sundays, but the, the first two Sundays there'll only be a couple of children and their families, so uh, there'll be room for quite a lot of other people at those Sunday Masses. Um, but I'll keep you informed on all that. So there we are, that's, that's the news for this week, and, and please do um, take careful note of that. There aren't the usual uh, uh, weekday times, Monday to Friday, in Bishop Eaton this week. So I hope that's uh, loud and clear. Hope you have a lovely weekend. It seems we're getting the best of the weather. If you're following the cricket in Southampton, it's uh, been badly disrupted. And yet here we are up in the northwest enjoying uh, these beautiful sunny days. So I hope you're able, if you're up in the north, to enjoy it. Uh, and if you're on the other side of the world, well, I hope your weather isn't as bad as it seems to be in Southampton. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go forth in peace, glorifying the Lord with your lives. Thanks be to God. And we'll end with the last two verses of St. Alphonsus's hymn. O the pitiful and mild, cease not to pray for me. For I do love thee as a child, and sigh for love of thee. Thou art clement, thou art chaste, Mary, thou art fair. Of all mothers, sweetest, fairest, none with thee compare. O mother, blessed for me, obtain, ungrateful though I be, to love that God who first could deign, to show such love for me. Thou art clement, thou art chaste, Mary, thou art fair.